You anticipate, uh, you write, uh, Grand Rapids is a place where I would become more Midwestern than Harlemite, more American than black, and more complex than was comfortable or necessary. Is that what you're describing? Yeah. This transit, personal transition that yeah. Grand Rapids puts into you, or the circumstances of Grand Rapids puts into you? Yeah, and I go back now and I see it as having lived all my adult life on the East Coast, um, I see it as, you know, hopelessly Midwestern and I mm. look at my Midwestern roots and think um, how far psychically I've traveled, although I still love the University of Michigan football team mm -hmm. and uh, I still wear a Creston High School t-shirt uh, around in the summertime. Mm -hmm. so. But you also write that uh, um, when you're in school in Grand Rapids and you're student council president, recognized by your peers as a leadership figure, uh, a model student, a leader, but deep down, you write, I guess I was also trying to demonstrate that I was not like those other people, that I was different. My message was quite clear. I was not nigger. Right. So describe the feeling that you have to demonstrate you're not like this despised other group of people, that you're different from and better than they. Um, well, you don't simply get the concept of uh, shiftless nigger from, only from white people, although the culture surely was full of that. Mm -hmm. But there was a, as you know, a sh very sharp uh, class consciousness among blacks. Mm -hmm. And although my parents, um, none of the adults around whom I grew up um, expressed those views, there was plenty among other black people um, and of course you knew, you, you knew and you saw poor black people and, uh, just up from the south and uh, who didn't behave in the way that uh, was acceptable to white culture. And I didn't want to be, I didn't, I just didn't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want people to think it was like that, that, that I was, that I was different. I could. Well, the old folks used to have a saying, old black folks, they'd say, oh, you know, he, he's, he's, just up from, he's just up from the country. He doesn't know how to do. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to know that I knew how to you do. You knew how to do. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you didn't know how to do, uh, how was that, uh, would, did that affect you personally? Or did you have a consciousness this was a group thing, that you somehow represented a larger group and that you had to do in order to demonstrate that the larger group was okay too. Well, uh, and as a teenager, I was uh, much more concerned with my own personal development mm -hmm. that I was sure. than I was in being a member of the group. Although I surely had a race consciousness because um, uh, I did go to NACP meetings in Grand mm -hmm. Rapids when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. and um, so I always felt that I had an obligation to the group, but I also wanted to be separate from the group. I, I, I wanted my own personal exemption. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, that as I look back, I think that that's not very different from a lot of uh, what was going on in the heads of a lot of people in the, in the NACP when they sought desegregation. Because I think a lot of them felt, well, if the white folks can only see us and know, see how we can use our forks and we speak standard English and we use deodorant, that they will find out that there's no difference. Mm -hmm. Now, just as the founding fathers, when they said to the British lords that all men are created equal, they were not talking about the slaves mm -hmm. and they weren't talking about landless white people. They were talking about us, us. dealing with you and I think a lot of black people, middle class black people, who were seeking desegregation, desegregation were the same way. They were looking up and saying, me too, not them. Mm. And uh, I th have to admit that as a, as a young person trying desperately to find my place in the world, that uh, I had some of that. Mm. A sense of separation between yourself and this class of people, right. uneducated, unskilled, unlettered, right. not dressed properly.